Hello Trade Pros, this is Victoria from Trade Pro Academy yet again and we've got another great video for you today. And in today's video we are going to be breaking down the most common support and resistance mistakes traders may make and how they use them incorrectly. And we're going to break down the solutions and how you can go forward using these tips to better your use of support and resistance levels. So with that being said, I hope everyone is ready and excited for this video. I want you guys to smash that like button and smash that subscribe button before we get right into this video and into this intro. If you guys want to see more videos like this, just stick around and ring that little bell to notify you when we do go live and when we do post new videos at Trade Pro Academy. So with that being said, let's get ready for this intro, everyone. There are many support and resistance mistakes that traders make. I feel like a lot of people do know how to draw their support and resistance level, so we're going to kind of bypass that for today. We're going to give you a quick little intro on how it's done, depending on the time frame that you guys trade. But other than that, we're going to go into support and resistance trading mistakes, how people may make those errors and how they may get frustrated with the outcome. Now, in front of me, we got the S&P 500 chart and we have just one resistance level here, but we want to navigate this and draw only the most important support resistance areas. And I like to classify those as key areas of rejection. How price rejects a certain area becomes a support resistance area, right? The more it rejects that level or the more it tests that level, the more interested I may be in that support and resistance. For example, we have one right here at this low. So if we go like that, we have a support resistance that was touched multiple times. It doesn't have to be super exact. And some traders might see this one right here and plop one right here. Along with this one, let's make it the same as the other two that we've drawn. So we've got some key support resistance areas here that we've drawn. And maybe we can put one more down here. And all we're doing is trying to find areas of key rejection that may have been tested multiple times. Now this brings us into mistake number one one. So it's common to think that the more a support or resistance level is tested, the stronger it is. Well, the truth behind that is the more it is actually tested in a short period of time, the weaker it becomes because it's been tested time and time again. Yes, it can't break through any of those times, but eventually you're going to see a huge stop run. Why does it get weaker every time we see that level tested? Number one, you will start to accumulate stops on either end. So at this point, you start looking for stop hunts. For example, the more this area right here that I'm about to draw on, the more this area gets tested time and time again, rejecting resistance. One, two, there's infinite times over here. It's ranging at this point. It gets tested a few times here, gets rejected. The more this area gets rejected, the more you find stops above, right? And stops get hunted. How do we know that there's going to be stops above? Well, every time it gets into the same level, big sellers come in, right? Sellers come in and they push it lower. They push it lower. Okay, nice. They push it lower and then they push it lower again. Well, every time that they push it lower, these sellers have their stops placed above that key resistance area. Meaning if buyers manage to get a hold of that of this resistance area right here just even barely it's going to trigger a plethora of buy stops to the upside opening up a buy stop run so a key indicator of that is watching how this support or resistance area is tested right here seeing how it's rejected you can see it's kind of slowly being rejected a little more aggressively here but also noticing what happens with the most recent lows. So in this scenario, how do you know a resistance point is going to get blown apart, right? How do you know the buy stops are coming? If you guys said that there are higher lows coming into this market, then you're correct. So every time it rejects this resistance area, it tries to push it lower. Well, if the sellers are strong, it'll push it even lower to the, the next time if it holds that area. However, you can see the second test around, you see a higher low, which is indicative of a potential move and buy stop above this key level. So let's see what happens through that area. And you get that buy stop move. So it's not necessarily 
the truth that the more a supporter resistance level is tested, the stronger it becomes. So it's the same to the downside. You want to identify a support level that is not tested too many times to hold support and creates higher lows each time it holds that support. So for example, you have this right here, this support structure right here that was prior resistance broken, okay, gets tested, an equal high gets tested again, higher high, that's what we need, checked off so that passes the trend test. Even a higher low breaks higher, does pull back eventually into the same support structure, but we do still manage to see higher highs get printed. So that's mistake number one that people use usually fall under and that's trusting a supporter resistance level multiple times because they think that it's going to hold the more it gets tested. Watch those higher highs and higher lows or lower lows on these support structure moves. So mistake number two that people often succumb to is when it comes to trading a support resistance level, traders, investors, whatever it may be, swing traders, day traders, set their stops above or below, just above or below key support or resistance areas, right? If that area has not been tested before, then it makes a little more sense. However, a key support or resistance area, if you're setting it based on the asset you're trading, just a few ticks or a few dollars above a key support or resistance, it has the potential to whip up, head fake, and then pull back in the direction of your trend. So for example, if you're setting your stop just above this support resistance area right here, this resistance, you're getting taken out on this little tiny head fake before you actually get your move to the downside. Same thing here. People trust their levels like there's no tomorrow and just set stops directly below the levels, rinsing the sell stops just slightly before you get the move in your direction. You'll get stop hunted. Head fakes are sometimes larger than this. This looks insignificant, but if you're trading a more incremental term, this is the S&P 500 futures chart, more of a smaller term or maybe Forex or something, you'll see that the head fakes are a little more aggressive. So markets head fake to rip those stops before they do move into the direction of the trend. Now, a solution for this is setting the stop a distance away using the range and the trend to look at your swing highs, swing lows to set those stops, for example, and waiting for confirmation. So confirmation becomes a rejection candle that actually holds that support resistance level, right? So if you're looking at this area right here, very small, very incremental, you do get this red candle that head fakes lower, but I'm waiting to see if my green candle can appear close out here on this session and I'm just going to put my stop a decent distance below that red wick, right? This doesn't ensure, but it starts to help me in terms of placing my stop at a more favorable area, right? So if I want to be a little more aggressive and have a wider stop, I could watch where this, the previous swing lows or swing highs were. Right, so the previous swing low is somewhere here. I could set my stop down here and then target would be above this break through this area. That's a large stop, a very wide stop, but some people look at incremental levels and they do look at those swing highs and swing lows to place their stops. So if we have a low, it starts to hold out. Maybe I wanna place my stop below the prior low that we see here directly to the left and have a much more extended profit target as well. So. That was a mistake number two that a lot of people make, putting their stops way too close to their key levels and getting head faked out. Now, mistake number three that I've noticed in terms of support and resistance utilization is trusting a support resistance level to actually reject price and continue in your direction when there's too many obstacles. So what does that mean? That means that you're waiting for a not so clean push into your support resistance area rather than a more clean direct move into that area. The not so clean look may look like this jagged and a little more choppy. So for example, if we take a look at this right here, this area right here, yes, we do have a support structure here, but notice after we get that push higher, after we get this push higher, it comes down into that area very jaggedly. So you got all this cluster of potential resistance coming up and that makes your profit target a little less achievable, right? So if you're coming into an area, 
you want to see a little more of a direct push lower into that support resistance. So that means that your profit target is somewhere up here because there are no obstacles on this move. You can see this move is very direct and sharp right here. It's just a candle lower, two candles lower. That means the next obstacle is all the way all up here. So that means if you're getting long somewhere here, you have a pretty clear eye on where the take profit would be. For example, same thing. If you're looking to potentially short this here, Look how many obstacles there are. Look how jagged and rigid this area is. You can see how many ups and downs, ups and downs. So you have obstacles here, 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 here. Every single time it makes a slight push higher, you're put in front of a new support resistance obstacle. So you want to see more of a clean press either higher or lower to play off your support resistance areas. So again, if we have a potential support resistance right here somewhere, and we're looking to buy that level, it comes down into it a little more jaggedly at this area, right? It comes down to it a little more jaggedly. So you have target number one, target number two, instead of looking for that potential move higher. Look at this significant drop push significant drop. So now if we get into this broken lower into here, you're very comfortable that the noise is non-existent and you can actually look for a very fast move for your profit and a very concise move for your profit. So what that means is mistake number three, a lot of people get very excited no matter noise or not into their support or resistance level and kind of bypass that which affects their take profit areas so keep that in mind and you may be taking a little more risk than you should for the profit that may be presented to you so lastly mistake number four in terms of support resistance areas just because you have a support resistance does not mean it'll hold to the exact tick, the exact dollar, the exact euro, the exact whatever denomination of asset you're trading. You have to keep these areas and you have to trust them with a grain of salt, right? Take it with a grain of salt. So just because it hits your level doesn't mean, it, number one, it's gonna reject it, doesn't mean it's gonna hold it to the exact incremental move. So watch your support and resistance levels very carefully. You could draw very nice levels, but they could head fake very slightly before going into your direction. So watch your levels very carefully and wait for some confirmation, wait for some rejection at those levels to tell you that, okay, this area is gonna hold unless you use a large stop. So in this scenario right here, if you're looking at this area and saying, okay, this is a key support resistance area, let me just sell my level and then have the stop above here. In this scenario, it would have worked, but in other scenarios, that support resistance may have been easily bypassed. We could have head faked and then gone lower, right? So let's reiterate our four mistakes before we wrap this video up. I hope everyone has enjoyed it so far, but mistake number one, the more a level is tested does not necessarily mean that level is going to be that much stronger, right? So if we have a support resistance here, it's tested twice very aggressively, three times pretty well, but the third time it wasn't as aggressive of a rejection and we got that push lower, right? Mistake number two, Careful setting your stops above or below key support or resistance areas. Give it enough room and base it potentially on a swing high or low. So again, for example, if I'm shorting this level right here and I see a, a nice swing high right here, I may place my stop above that instead of just putting it right at my support resistance, just above my support resistance, because that risks me getting head faked out of this move and then watching it go in my direction. So mistake number four, careful buying and selling price if it does not make a clean move to your level, because that means your profit potential may be a little more limited. And number four, just because you have a support resistance level and you are the master of drawing support and resistance levels does not mean that it has to hold to the exact dollar amount, tick amount, whatever denomination of financial asset you trade. So let it confirm, let it hold out before you make a trade decision. Having said that, I hope everyone enjoyed those four mistakes and I hope you guys learned a lot from them so you can work on those and avoid those mistakes in the future. So this is Victoria from Trade Pro Academy. If you guys like this video, I want you guys to smash that like button, drop a comment down below what you think, and let me know what kind of videos would you like to see next. You want to see more stuff on TradingView? You want to see more support resistance? 
videos, let us know and I will accommodate. Now, here's a word from George to wrap this up and I hope everyone enjoys this video and I want to see you guys next time here at Trade Pro Academy. Hello and thank you for watching this video. I want to take a moment to invite you to an exclusive online trading masterclass. In this event, you're going to learn three key things to help take your trading to the next level. Number one, we're going to teach you a complete price action strategy used by professional traders on a daily basis. Plus give you the checklist so you know how to check off each step to qualify the opportunities. Number two, we're going to teach you how to use advanced order flow analytics to help you qualify high probability, low risk trade setups on a daily basis. Plus, we're going to teach you how to use that order flow to disqualify the trades that you're used to taking that end up being stopped out. Number three, we're going to show you how you can apply all of this information with a small account because you can start small and scale up. In fact, that's the only way to start and a lot of our traders are doing it in our community on a daily basis. This is an exclusive offer you can get online only at this event. I look forward to seeing you at this masterclass and teaching you these three secrets of highly profitable day trading. Take care and have a great day.